Okay, so welcome everyone to the Rugby Grub Cook Along with Theo and Harry, um, sponsored by Gauchos. You might see also over there, sponsor in the corner. So thanks very much to them. Um, what we're going to do is Theo and Harry are going to talk us through how to cook this dish. Um, I, I certainly couldn't do it, so I'm not doing it. Um, but if you guys have any questions, if you whack it in the chat box and I'll ask them for you guys. Um, we've got Paddy Jackson and Matt Williams on the call as well um so they're going to give it a go and uh yeah best of luck over to you Theo and Harry. Sweet hey guys um so we are making um some lamb leg steaks um uh with some bacon cabbage and mashed potato so try to make it as Irish as possible obviously for Paddy's day um but neither of us are Irish so uh if you are Irish we're sorry if we're offending you with this um but yeah so we're gonna have a good crack with this um Hopefully it goes smoothly. Um, hopefully everyone's ready to go. Um, but if any stage something goes wrong with your cooking or we're not making sense, uh, stick your hand up um, or drop a question in the chat box. Um, but is everyone else ready to go? You get a thumbs up if we're good to go. Let's go. Sweet. Um, right, let's do this. First step. So everyone uh, can stick their kettles on. So we're going to boil some water ready for the potatoes. Um, so if you want to stick that on. We peel in these spuds, Theo. Um, yeah, I'm going to peel my spuds. If you don't want to peel your spuds, you don't have to peel your spuds, but it makes a better looking mash, I think. So I'm going to peel the spuds. Lovely. Nice and creamy. How are we looking? Sweet. Um, so while we're doing this, I'll just quickly explain the, the idea behind the pan sauce. So pan sauce, we can obviously make lamb steaks. Um, after you make a steak, um, there's obviously that lovely kind of cooked like charring on the bottom of the pan. Um, and so making this sauce, it's kind of like a gravy, but we're basically gonna get all the, the good flavor off the bottom of the pan um, by using some stock and some wine or whiskey, if you fancy that, um, and make a lovely sauce for this. So um, that's gonna be nice at the end of it. Um, Tastes pretty good. Are we using Irish whiskey or? Yeah, so I couldn't find any Irish whiskey, but I think that would be the go-to. Are you gonna use whiskey bars? I've only got Japanese whiskey. <laughs> so it's a I, might, I might use that or I've got some red wine, but I'm not sure. I'm thinking I'm just gonna decide at the end. I like the idea of Japanese whiskey. It's, it's unbelievable. It's so smooth. Yeah, is there a correct way to peel your potatoes? Paddy's a very stabby action. Yours is quite smooth. What's the best option here? Um, I'd say the best way is just don't cut yourself. Like, you don't want to shave your skin as well. So, Paddy, I'd... careful. Paddy, careful. Slow it down, mate. Slow it down. I'm just going to watch you now, Paddy. I'm a bit worried about you. So, uh, I think I got... Um small potatoes so I'm kind of feel like I'm rushing a bit. Um it's alright if it's a little bit of skin on it, is there? Yeah. See I would keep the skin on normally but I wanted this to look kind of fancy so I'm gonna take it off. But keeping the skin on is definitely fine. Crushed new right. potato. I think I'm gonna keep the skin on then. Sweet. So once we've all finished um peeling our potatoes and hopefully no one's cut themselves. Uh, we're basically going to chop these potatoes nice and small. So, um, whatever, whichever way you want to do it, um, kind of slice lengthways down it, then half again, and then just nice and small chunks. Um, ideally, keep them the same size so they're going to cook um, at the same time so we don't get a lumpy mash. Um, but yeah, so pretty much you want to look into getting the potatoes about that kind of size. Um, and then once they start chopped, um, just chuck them in the pan. stage boys that seems pretty easy so far i mean all we've done is peel the potato yeah right, do you want to walk us through the next step mate while yeah. we're these potatoes 
So I'm just going to read this off my phone because I don't know for the full recipe. This is Theo's recipe, I'm going to add. So if it does go wrong, it's his fault. Um, so we've got the potatoes boiling. Um, so next, we're going to get a cold pan. So I've got a frying pan here. And we're going to add the bacon lardons to start with. And then we're going to put the heat on to them. Oh. So is going to go in. Um, hopefully our water's nice and hot. Um, if you've got salt to hand, um, give that a good um, crack of salt in there. Give that a stir. Ideally not with a knife, but it'll do. So, um, how are we looking? Is everyone everyone's potatoes in? I think we're still... One second, sorry. My peeler's in the wash, so I'm using a knife. Oh dear. My dad's taken ages to do this as well. So slow. Nothing wrong with being slow on the peeling, Mr. Eldrington. <laughs> I did three potatoes and then just left the skin on the rest. Nice. Like that. Just a mixture. A better view here. You there must you be go. quite well versed in potatoes, Paddy. <laughs> An Irishman. <laughs> yeah. I just love love everything about potatoes. I, I picked these uh, myself today, actually, out in the garden. <laughs> Packaged them myself as well. <laughs> uh, How long are we um, boiling them? Um, we're going to boil them 15 minutes. So when, uh, <coughs> when the potatoes are in the boiling water, set time of 15 minutes. So I'll set that now. Um, and then yeah. if you haven't set one, you can just go by my timer. But we're basically going to put everything else on um, and then take the potatoes out. And then once the steaks are cooking, um, we'll mash the potatoes. So um, I'll use Buddy and Matt as my gauge. But are you, uh, are you boys ready to move on or are you still doing your potatoes? No, oh, I'm ready. Yeah, I'm ready. Jump my potatoes are in. Beautiful. So next... Um, we're using pancetta or like bacon lardons, but if anyone's using normal bacon, um, just chop that up. That's going to go into a cold pan. Um, Baz, can you tell me the reason we're putting it in a cold pan? We want to render the fat slowly, release all the goodness and sort of melt that fat away to make sure it's nice and crisp. Is that correct? Um, yeah, that's correct. You got full marks from me. Um, and also as well, obviously, cabbage is, is not to everyone's taste. Um, but when you cook anything in bacon fat, it tastes nice. So all the fat's going to come out. Um, and then once the, the cabbage is chopped up, it's going to come out bacon fat. And uh, it's going to taste lovely. So, bacon's in the pan. Hang on there, Paddy. So I'm just digging out my favourite pan. Look back. How much, um, how many lardons there? I've got a two pack here. Yeah, you're looking about 100 grams, Matt, which is one of those packets. Thank you. Yeah, so you're looking about 100 grams. Oh, yeah, I should probably say the, uh, the quantity of what we're putting in. Um, so we've got 100 grams of bacon gone in. So the next thing we do is cook, chop our cabbage up. Um, Baz, and answer your question before. I've yeah. got no idea how to chop a cabbage. Okay. So if everyone can see roughly on my screen, I'll move that out of the way. Does anyone know how to chop a cabbage in the chat? <laughs> Barry? <laughs> no? Okay. You sound like a screen of ours. Um, so what, what my best guess is, Baz, is we're going to basically cut it into slices. So nice thin slices, I'd say lengthways. Um, so I should say before, chop, chop it in half and then into lengthways. Um, so now I've chopped it lengthways. Um, I'm essentially just gonna rotate it and then slice it across. So you basically want it just finely chopped. It doesn't really matter how you get there, but you just wanna finely chop it. Mm. 
Lovely. So yeah, you can be finely chopped cabbage. Are you putting it over with a knife? Like white bit. Adam? Is that going in as well? The like stalk almost, or are we leaving um, them? Yeah, why not? It doesn't have to. So if you don't, if you've got a big yeah stalk, you don't have to chuck that in. Um, but essentially, yeah, you just want it kind of. I'll get an example there. So I don't know if that's going to zoom in, but yeah. So basically, you want it kind of roughly chopped like that um, before that's ready to go in. Lovely. How are we going, boys, on this? Good. Uh, yeah, good. Good. Are we, we've started heating the bacon, have we? Yeah, bacon's on now. So you want it in the cold pan and just make sure that's turned on so it's starting to cook kind of down. Low, low heat? High heat? Probably medium high, Paddy. I don't know what that means, but I hear lots of cooking people say medium high, so... Six out of nine. Yeah, if you're cooking out of nine, I've got on a six. So that should start to sizzle nicely. As Harry beautifully said, the fat will render out of that. Um, and that's when we're going to cook the cabbage in. Um, but once you've chopped your cabbage, we're just waiting for that bacon to crisp up nicely. Um, and that's it so far. Good. Anyone else got any questions thus far on what's going on? Um, I got a question for Matt Williams. Matt, what is your go-to dish that you would cook if you got asked to uh, cook on a date? On a date? Yeah. Ah, uh, well, probably be a sea bream, wouldn't it? Nice bit of tarragon, uh, something like that. Then I'd probably go for some. Um, dofu noir potatoes, uh, lots of cream, I think is the key here. Cream and butter um, for flavor. You've got to make sure it's good. The presentation doesn't have to be spot on the first one, but the flavor's got to be there. So uh, something like that, I'd say. Matt, feel free to make that for me anytime, though. Well, when we're allowed COVID regulations, I will do here. Paddy, what's your uh, your go to go to meal, mate? Um, my favorite meal is a roast chicken dinner. Um, just love love that. Um, or a kind of like prawn risotto with some butternut squash. I, I showed you that before, Theo. Quite quite a big fan of that. Yeah, good results. Um, so yeah, risotto with um, uh, prawns and like kind of small bits of butternut squash throughout it, like roasted. It's quite nice. Sounds lovely. Theo, Harry, you need to get Paddy on Rugby Grub for a special appearance with that. Paddy's housemate is actually the best chef out of any of us here. So he's he's the one with the no. Yeah, I'm using his, his I'm using his Japanese knives at the minute, which he told me not to use. So hopefully he's not on this. <laughs> um, he's he's moved back. Uh, home during COVID, so hopefully he's not on this call and can see me using his knives. They're pretty expensive, but... Sweet. Right, so right now I'll, I'll step in here and say that my bacon's cooking and it's starting to sizzle. Um, once that bacon's sizzling, kind of cooked on the outside, we can chuck our cabbage into that pan. So okay. everyone at that stage? Woohoo! I think so, yeah. Lovely. If it's not quite starting to render out yet, you can leave it another minute. Um, but you want to get that cabbage in there. Is there a better smell than bacon cooking, honestly? Oh. Sweet. So just mix the cabbage um, in that yeah, yeah. Dom's just asked, do you put oil in with the cabbage? Um, so thanks for reminding me. Uh, we're not going to put any oil in with the cabbage, but there should be enough bacon fat um, in the pan. Um, we're also going to add about 10 grams of butter. So on the recipe, there was 30 grams of butter. So basically, you should add like a small knob of butter into the pan as well. So thank you for reminding me that. Um, so that's going to go in as well. Lovely. As Matt said, just add butter to everything and it'll taste lovely. So pretty much, um, that was in here cooking. The cabbage is going to kind of cook down in the baking fat. It's going to go a bit soft and then 
after about 10 minutes or so, um, it's going to go nice and crispy. So once your cabbage is in the pan, you can pretty much kind of leave it. Give it a stir every now and again, um, but that's going to cook down nicely. Turn the heat down slightly. Uh, yeah, I'd say so. Um, depends. You basically want it cooking at like a bit of, um, you don't want it to like fry, like properly fry so it gets burnt. Um, so What's now the braise? A braise. Yeah, or saute maybe. Yeah, that's the one. Nice. So yeah, Matt, I'm you had a bit of you four out of nine, Matt. Bit of pepper tomorrow. Four out of nine. All right. Nine, yeah. Um, we're se we're seasoning here, are we? Um, yeah, we are gonna like as you said, we're gonna put some salt and pepper in right now. So probably just a tiny bit of salt, not too much, otherwise because the bacon will taste a bit salty. So just a little bit of salt um, and a good few cranks of black pepper. See my very fancy pepper grinder here. Sweet. Right, is everyone happy with this at this stage? Everyone's cabbage is in, looking good. Beautiful. Amazing for you. Nice. Um, right, so our next step is we're going to turn our attention to our lamb steaks. Um, Pretty much, you can have any cut of lamb here. So if you haven't, if you've got chops or anything else, don't worry. But we've got a nice big frying pan here. You want to turn that onto like a high heat. So for Matt, we're talking seven out of nine. Um, so as you can get the pan nice and warm, we want the pan nice and warm. So when the steaks hit it, they start searing and frying straight away. Okay, so everyone, we can get our uh, pans on the heat. So when, while we do that, keep stirring the potatoes. Um, but they're pretty much stirring away. So yeah, we've got some lamb steaks here. Um, we're basically gonna hit them just really simple seasoning. So we're gonna go salt, pepper, um, and some dried rosemary. You can add loads of stuff to this, but um, we'll just keep it nice and simple for now. Um, so you wanna get a little bit of oil um, or kind of any cooking oil you've got. Um, and we're just gonna lightly drizzle um, the steaks with a little bit of oil just to help find um, all the seasonings to it. So just a bit of a drizzle of oil and then we hit those with a good couple of cranks of salt and pepper. Um, so just eyeball this, doesn't have to be exact. Um, a good bit of salt and pepper um, and then rosemary. Hey, Harry. Harry. Um, I've only got a fresh rosemary. Is that okay? It's probably, it's very okay. So if you've got fresh rosemary, yeah. Um, you basically just want to chop that. So chop it nice and fine, Harry. Um, yeah. So if anyone's using fresh rosemary, um, you just want to strip it off the stalk and then chop it nice and fine. Perfect. Again, if anyone's got any questions on what we're doing um, or if I need to clarify anything, just drop a message in the chat or uh, um, just make one of us aware so we can uh, unmute you. Um, but yeah, hopefully, pan's getting nice and hot. And um, we're just seasoning these steaks. So you basically just want to do it on both sides. So a little bit of a drizzle of oil, salt and pepper and rosemary, and then just flip them over um, and hit them with some more salt and pepper and some rosemary. Um, we're oiling them now, so you're not going to need to oil your pan. Um, so the pan's going to be nice and hot. Um, and these will cook nicely. Paddy, how are we looking on your end? Yeah, good. I um, pretty much got everything in control here, I think. Nice. Ready to put the meat in. Have you, have you, is the meat on in the pan yet? No, so meat's still there. So he's waiting a few minutes to get the pan nice and hot. I don't think that looks good at change. I'm just gonna look at oh, it's getting hot in here. Yeah, I'm getting a bit steamy. Yeah. Maybe time to put the extraction fan on. You said yeah. you're steaming steam in here? Yeah, I'm absolutely steaming. No. A bit steamy, Matt. Oh, I see. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. Thanks for clarifying. I wondered when we were getting the whiskey out. Yeah, I mean, everyone feel free to have a tip of their whiskey or I've got I've got my wine for the cooking here later, so cheers guys. Right. Um so 
I'll keep going along with the stakes unless anyone's got any questions with those. Um, boys, how are we doing? We got our stakes ready to go? Ready to go for you. Yes, sir. Is that anything? Yeah. Are you good to go? Good to go. Sweet. Let's do it. So, hands nice and hot. Um, just lay your stakes carefully down. So, if you've got nice and oil, so they're all oiled up. They're not stick to you. Um, but yeah, so stakes in the pan right now. So, they're going to cook for about probably four to five minutes each side. Um, we're going to cook to a nice medium rare. So, um, they'll be good to go. Right, so everyone at this stage, so cabbage is cooking away nicely, keep giving that a stir. Um, potatoes should be coming to about done. Um, so everyone, if you want to check your potatoes, see how well done they are. Um, the idea is that a knife should kind of easily slide through um, without any kind of resistance. So just grab a spoon or anything Drain off and then just see if your kind of rough knife goes through it. Yeah, I've got a question. Yes, Harry. Favorite St. Patrick's Day moment? The favorite St. Patrick's Day moment? Um, in terms of rugby or just St. Patrick's Day? In, in general? general, I think. Yeah, I mean, I think the Paddy's Day game for all of us is pretty, it's pretty special. So I've only played in one in my time here. Um, and it was against Gloucester. And it's probably the biggest day, the bit of, biggest crowd that I played in front of the Medeski. So that was pretty cool. Um, but then my favorite moment of it was that um, a fan threw a pint of Guinness at me after the game. Um, I'm not sure why, but everyone's pretty steaming after the Paddy's Day game. So getting a pint of Guinness chucked all over me was, uh, was interesting to say the least, Baz. Um, oh. So, yeah. What place of a pint? Yeah, Medeski, absolutely, absolutely crazy place. Um, so yeah. What about you, Harry? I think I'd say the same. I, I, I remember the Gloucester game was a really good game. Um, we did a, a community visit a couple of years ago, and we were going around Trafalgar Square on a big St Patrick's Day float for London Irish. So that was a bit of a crazy experience in front of like tens of thousands of people like waving with like um doing like line out lifts and passing it was very strange i didn't really know what was going on but we were on this massive float going around Trafalgar square so that was pretty special as well did you come on graham norton Harry? yeah i did yeah that's not you too bad did as well didn't you no i wasn't there oh you you're probably playing that's why you back then. Um, beautiful. So, steak's cooking nicely. Our cabbage, I don't know if you can see this, but it's starting to kind of crisp up on different edges. So, that's kind of, we want it nice and crispy, but we don't want it to burn. So, if your cabbage is starting to burn, um, turn the heat down a little bit, but pretty much this will be good to go by the time the rest of the stuff's done. So, my time has just gone off while Harry was speaking uh, for the potatoes. So, check your potatoes. Um, they should be kind of done after 15 minutes now. Um, so I'm going to drain my potatoes um, and then we'll start mashing them. So um, grab a sieve or a con or anything like that, just chuck them in there and then bring them back to the pan here. Everyone good with that? Sweet. Oh, oh, steamy face. So a quick tip for your mashed potatoes. Um, so we've got our drained potatoes here um, and we stick them back on the heat, um, the pan that they were in. This basically is just gonna evaporate any more moisture um, that was in the potatoes because we want them nice and dry before we start to mash them. Right. How's everyone's steaks looking? Oh, great. Good, so steaks are starting to get some color on them. Um, what we'll do now is we'll take our mashed potatoes and we'll just get our mashed potatoes good to go so we can put them aside um, 
ready for serving later. So they're off the heat. Um, we're going to go in with our mashed potatoes um, with 10 more grams of the butter. So a good number of butter. Um, some more salt and pepper. We go pretty heavy with the salt here. We want our potatoes nice and salty. So give that a good salting and then a few cranks of black pepper. Um, I'm also going to grab a bit of milk to add in. So that's going to make them nice and creamy. Um, or if you want to add a bit more fat, you can add some olive oil here. How's your mash looking here, Matt? Huh? How's your mash looking? Uh, yeah, I fear I've done slightly too little. That is a shame. You are a hungry boy as well. Oh, well. So, yeah, when all that's in your pan as well, just mash it up. I'm not going to tell you how to do that. Um, if it's looking a bit dry, um, add some more milk um, or a little bit more olive oil um, and give it a taste as well. Um, see if it needs any more seasoning. Cool. Just keep an eye on the steaks at this stage as well. Um, so my steak's probably about good to go to flip. So I'm going to bring this up here to show you. So we want that nice colouring on the steaks. Um, so it's not quite burning yet, but it's got a good bit of colour. Are we looking on your end, um, Bazzi? Pardon? So how are we looking on your end? Yeah, I've just I've just flipped them same as you. Gonna... Nice. Perfect. <laughs> Yeah, got a question for you, mate. What's your go-to spice? Um, I'm going to try and move this off. Um, one second. Um, so just quickly, I'll get to that. So my cabbage is starting to burn a little bit. So once it's kind of getting a bit crispy, um, you can just take that off the heat and set it aside. So mine's kind of good to go now. Um, everyone keeps kind of checking on theirs. Um, so mine's coming off the heat now. You can set that aside. Um, my go-to spice is paprika. I put smoked paprika in everything. Um, so I think it adds a really nice smoky texture. Um, I'm pretty spice intolerant. So if I put paprika in something, it kind of tastes spicy to me. So um, that goes in pretty much all my marinades, different meats, um, anything like that, kind of bolognese, um, chilies, things like that. I always put like loads and loads of smoked paprika in, um, which, is, uh, which is good for me. So I love it. Harry, what about you, mate? Um, I'm similar. I'm more cumin. I love cumin. Um, and I put garlic in everything, which I got from my father. He's on the call. So I blame him for that. Um, but yeah, cumin's my favourite, I think, at the moment. Cool. Um, all right, guys. So... Steaks are about to be done for me. Um, I hope everyone's kind of getting along nicely. So my mash is all done as well. Um, so once you've mashed up your potatoes, um, we're just going to set that aside with the cabbage, um, just ready to serve. Sweet. So um, pretty much with the steaks, you can either kind of just guess how much they're done. I think they'll be done at around a medium, medium rare at the moment. Um, if you've got a meat thermometer, you want to get it on about 53 degrees, I think. Um, I've got one, but I'm not going to use it because it's a bit of fat right now. Um, but my steaks are ready to come off. So we're going to take those steaks off and just set them aside on a chopping board while we make the sauce. Matt and Paddy, how are we looking at the moment? Um, and all the excitement at the start, I think I, I put just I think I put the kettle on. I think I just put cold water on the potatoes, so they're taking a bit longer. Um, but they're nearly ready, so I actually haven't started mashing yet. But I'm, okay, I'm yeah, that's what get me. Um, yeah, I'm so I'm enjoying myself, and um, yeah, I'm just uh, waiting for the potatoes to boil here. So um, all good. Lovely, Matthew. How are you doing? 
Um, yeah, good. My stakes aren't quite there yet, but um, otherwise it's looking okay. My cabbage got quite watery, so it's it's not quite crisped yet. So I'm just going to keep those on, but the mash is done, so I'm, I'm ready to make the sauce. Lovely. Um, cool. Um, so sauce is the next step. Um, like Matt said, if uh, your steaks aren't quite done, um, we'll just wait for those to get done. And then if your mash is done, that's cool. Set that aside. Um, if your cabbage is nice and crispy, you can set that aside as well. So once your mash is done and you're happy with that and the cabbage is done, just put that aside and we'll kind of um, forget about that for now while we make the sauce. Um, anyone else got any questions or um, want us to stop now before we make the sauce? Because the sauce is going to go quite quickly. So we can take a, a few seconds while everything's ready before that. Should we use the same pan for the sauce that we uh, used for the lamb, ideally? Uh, yes, so that's, yeah, so this is kind of, um, it's called our, originally a, a pan sauce. So the idea is to, um, so you've got the pan, so this is my pan. So as you can see, there's lots of brown, nice bits here. That's called uh, fond, um, it's a French word. I don't know if it means flavor, but it, it is lots of flavor on there. Um, so you've still got a little bit of oil, bit of kind of cooked rosemary on there. So yeah, mate, you want to use the same pan um, for your sauce that you cook your steaks with. Um, are your steaks ready, Matt? Bazzy, Paddy, are we good to go with the sauce? I'm ready, yeah. Yep. Yeah, ready. Lovely. I hope everyone else is ready to go for their sauce, but if not, um, it's pretty simple. So the things we're going to start with are um, some alcohol of choice. So if you want to use fancy Japanese whiskey like Harry, do that. Um, Irish whiskey is obviously more traditional. Um, or some wine. So if you're using whiskey, we're going to go for a double shot, which is about 50 mil. Or for wine, we're looking at about 100 um, about a kind of small glass like that. Um, Paddy mentioning about water has reminded me that we need to have stock on the go. So... Um, well, I'm just gonna make up my stock now. So I've still got some boiling water yeah, from. One I made earlier. Oh yeah, good from you, Harry. So um, we want about 200 mils of stock. So just into a jug or something else um, with a stock cube, um, stock cube or stock pot. Um, we're gonna need about 150, 200 mils of water there. So um, get that good to go. We probably want this ready, so if no one's, if everyone's steak doesn't finish cooking yet, we'll get the stock going. Um, so this is ready for the, the sauce. Um, the other two components of the sauce um, are going to be the butter and lemon juice. So butter is just going to help thicken it slightly um, and make it kind of taste nice and buttery. So nice and luxurious, nice and thick. Um, and then the lemon juice is just going to give a bit of sharpness to the kind of richness of the sauce. It's obviously going to be quite whiny. Um, obviously, I'm using chicken stock here, so it's going to be quite much. How much lemon juice are you using, PA? Pardon, Harry? How much lemon juice? About half, is it? Yeah, so you want about half a, half a lemon uh, juiced. Uh, is that that's boiling water in with the stock cube? Is it? Um, yes, ideally boiling water. Um, cold water might take quite a while for it to make, but yeah, boiling water is good, Paddy. Okay. Just like potatoes. Glad, we, glad we're checking this time. Yeah, that's why. Sweet. So um, I'll check with you and uh, with Matt and Harry. Um, you good to go with the stock, boys? Good to go. Sweet, right. So you've got your nice hot pan. It's still on the heat. Um, we're going to start with wine, then the stock, then the lemon juice and butter. So you want to get a, uh, a kind of spatula or utensil that you can scrape with. So I'm just going for a wooden spoon because um, we're going to scrape all that, that fond off the bottom. So we've got a hot pan there. Wine's going in or whiskey. And hopefully that's just going to start to bubble up nicely, okay? So as that starts to cook, you just want to scrape the pan and scrape all the nice fond off the bottom. Also, this is going to cook off all the alcohol, so it won't taste like alcoholy 
or bitter. It's just going to get a nice sweetness and flavor from the red wine. So, as you can see, this is mine's bubbling nicely. I'll move that out of the way. So yeah, while this is cooking, keep scraping that um, all the juices and all the all the fond off. That's lovely. So you want this still on a really high heat that we cook the steaks on, um, because it's basically going to reduce down nice and quick. Sweet. So at this stage, we're going to add about half the stock. Uh, we obviously don't want this too liquidy. Um, so we're going to add about 100 ml of our stock there. And that's going to go in. Again, this is going to kind of bubble up and thicken up nicely. Um, so you'll get like a nice thick kind of gravy type, type sauce. Um, next thing is the butter. So we've got 10 grams of butter left over um, from the mash um, and from um, our cabbage as well. So that last bit of butter is going to go in. That's going to melt nicely. And we'll just, uh, we'll leave the, the lemon juice to the end. So let that kind of bubble away nicely. Um, it's going to start to reduce down. So you want it nice and nice and thick. How are we looking there, boys? Good. Just put my butter in. Yeah, sorry, I'm not going to put my instruction fan on. So if it gets nice and steamy, um, that's all good. But yeah, I don't want the noise on. So um, I don't know if you can see this on my screen, but you want it kind of bubbling pretty rapidly. So if it's uh, if it's not cooking very hot, turn the heat right up to uh, to max. If you want this to reduce down. Um, I'm going to add the rest of my stock in now. So all my stock's gone in there. Um, all the butter is in. And so we are pretty much going to let that cook down for a couple of minutes. So we need to be doing anything else there in the meantime. Um, so in the meantime, if everyone's mash and cabbage are ready, I'm going to start plating up. So at this stage, if, you're, if your potatoes are still boiling like patties, um, you can keep those boiling um, till they're ready and when they're good to go, just mash them. Um, if like everyone else, or like if like me, um, all the cabbage is set aside, good to go, we're going to start plating up. Um, so just grab whatever plate is there. Um, Um, grab a nice kind of big spoon of your mash and just right in the middle of the plate there. You know what I find so annoying with the mashed potatoes when it gets stuck in the middle? Does anyone know how to get that off? No. I don't actually know what you mean at all, Baz. When it gets stuck in the masher. Yeah, just give it a good whack. Cool. So just chuck your potatoes on there. Can I add more whiskey to my sauce because I can't smell it anymore? Um, if you want more whiskey, go for it. But at this stage, you don't need loads of whiskey. Um, it's just a bit of flavour. But yeah, why not, Matt? Go for it. Thanks. Um, so then just on the side here, I'm um, going to add lots of bacon and cabbage. This is obviously not the most kind of technical way to plate up doing it on the hob, but we'll do it for Zoom. Sweet, so that's there. Um, sauce is reducing down. So I'm gonna chuck my, um, my lemon juice in now. So we've got a bit of stock over firm. Um, so just going with half, like Harry said, um, half of the lemon juice um, just in there nicely. Cool, so the last thing to do when we're playing up is obviously you're just gonna slice the steaks. Um, so you basically just wanna, in whatever direction you fancy really, um, just slice them nice and thinly. We're gonna go kind of like horizontally across um, and just a bit of an angle. So lay the kind of knife uh, slightly flat open like that. Um, mine's looking pretty good. Nice medium rare there. Um, and then we're gonna basically slide that over the top of the mash. So I'm having two of these steaks. So 
just going to leave mine over the top there. Big boy. Thankfully, this is looking actually a little bit like the one I made earlier when I was testing this, so that's always good. So sauce is still cooking away nicely. We basically want that nice and thick. So how is everyone looking at this stage, boys? Are we pretty much good to go? Can we can we just clarify what's in the sauce again? Mm, agreed. Okay, so in the sauce, um, you want either a double shot of whiskey, um, going in first to the pan, and then basically scraping the fond off. But they're gonna add 100 to 200 mil of stock um, so chicken stock, beef stock, whatever. Um, about 10 grams of butter and um, a squeeze of lemon juice. I've nailed it. Nailed it. How are you doing with your sauce, Matt? Uh, good, thank you. Lovely, so just at this stage, so mine's pretty much good to go. Um, I've got mine here. I'll try not to pour it on the floor, but yeah, you want it a kind of, it's still like pourable, um, but you kind of want it as, as stiff as you can get it. So I want to use wine, so mine's nice and ready. If you use whiskey, you might be slightly browner. Um, but we're pretty much good to go. Baz, you ready to play up? Yeah. Ready to go. Is there any technique to pouring the sauce on? Is it just... Um, I'm going to go pretty heavy handed. Um, you could spoon it on, it's nice and thick. I'm going to pour mine on, so heat's off now. Just get that nicely over the steak and all the mash. Um, and there, we are good to go. Um, I'm pretty happy with mine um, at this stage. Um, it looks like a bit of a, a bit of a pile. Um, we'll get the light on that. Nicely cooked steak there, bacon and cabbage, um, some mash drizzled with the sauce. Um, mm -hmm. So yeah, Bill, are we are we happy with my developments at this stage? That looks fantastic. I think we need to see Paddy and Matt see how they finished up. Uh, just give me give me a wee minute or two there. Whoa, okay, hold on. Yeah. Let me get me lighting. We've got the cabbage, and then there's mash underneath, and then a lot of lamb. Lovely. There you go. It's looking very nice. Um, Hopefully everyone following along as well is going going good at this stage. Uh, many major disasters like cold water on your potatoes. Um, it might not be quite a stage. Uh, yeah, well, look at the Elrington household, please. So I'm just I, my dad's not very good at like, actually following instructions, so it'll be interesting to see. Um, I've asked him to unmute. Oh. Yeah. Looks great. Double the recipe because there's four of us, and it's perfect. Really well done, guys. Beautiful. Can we get can we get a taste test? Of course. <laughs> we'll send you out. Uh, we'll drive round. <laughs> so let's have a. Here we go. Yeah, I'll uh, we'll all do a live one. So whoever's at this final stage. Um, We'll give it a bit of a go. How does that feel? That looks great. Perfect. Beautiful. That looks class. I'm going to try a bit of this, the lamb. Thanks very much. Oh, that is gorgeous. Nice work, guys. I think uh, we'll probably end it there so that everyone can enjoy their, their dinner. But thanks very much, Theo. Thanks, Harry, Paddy, Matt Williams. Thanks, guys. Um, yeah, we're going to put this up on YouTube so that if you ever want to watch it again and give it another go, see if you can improve on your first go, you can just head to our YouTube channel. Um, that'll probably go up tomorrow. But uh, yeah, thanks very much, guys. Enjoy your evening. Cheers, guys. Thanks so much. Cheers, guys. Thanks, Harry. Thank you, Theo. Thank you.